When describing these Olympic athletes, you might include racial or ethnic terms. But what do these terms mean in a sociological context? What is race? What is ethnicity? What are the differences between them? Historically, sociologists and biologists have defined race differently. In the past, biologists primarily used physical characteristics, such as skin color, hair, and bone structure, to differentiate between races. From a biological perspective, there were four different groups in the early days, just because of the convenience of classification, so we could do that pretty much by the skin color. But those really don't hold much validity anymore. We're all gonna be, we're gonna be looking at DNA molecules, and that's what's gonna define who we are and how closely we're related to people. To sociologists, race is not determined by physical characteristics alone. They see race as a social concept that may vary from one society to another, depending on how the people of a society perceive physical differences among human beings. Sociologists are much more interested, not in the biology of it, but the sociology of it, which is, how do people treat people who have different skin color? Some societies would judge someone to be black, where we would consider them to be white. Some societies judge someone to be white, which we would consider to be black. All right, we're going to talk about race and ethnicity. There are over six billion people in the world. Sociologist Kay Coder is half Scottish American and half Japanese. And she's had personal experience with these variables. Since I was five years old, people would ask me, what am I? And so, depending on what people thought I was, then they would treat me differently. When I'm here in the United States, when people look at me immediately, they're not sure what I am, but they don't think, well, she's fully a Caucasian American. And then, uh, but when I go to Japan, they look at me and they see I'm tall, I'm dark, I have brown spots, and they go, I don't know what she is, but she's uh, probably Caucasian. <laughs> you know, they see the Caucasian in me, and, but my physical features didn't change. And then when I went to England, people asked me where I was from, and I said, Texas, and they went, ah, hablo espanol? Because they immediately thought, well, she's got to be Hispanic. Because Although race is a social concept, ethnicity is different. Ethnicity is based on a shared cultural identity, such as that shared by Cajuns in South Louisiana, and can be accepted or rejected by an individual in the group. Sociologists define ethnicity as cultural characteristics that are shared within certain subgroups. Race typically is concerned with biology, physical characteristics, heredity, traits, etc. Whereas ethnicity is much more interested in culture, foods, languages. Racial and ethnic differences may produce stereotypes, prejudice, discrimination, and racism. Sociologists define stereotypes as behaviors or tendencies that are attributed to an entire group. Members of the group are thought to possess those particular characteristics simply through their membership in the group. A stereotype is an exaggerated image of a group that still remains after contrary evidence has been given. So stereotypes might be if we were to say that all women do X, whatever X might be, or all men tend to have this personality trait, or all African Americans have that personality trait. The use of stereotypes may lead to prejudice, which is an attitude that prejudges a person, either positively or negatively, on the basis of those stereotypes. A good example of prejudice is a person who calls a person by a racial epithet. For example, they call someone a dirty Mexican for Latinos, or they call someone a dumb blonde or a stupid woman driver. When a person is prejudiced, it may not come out in action, but when they do use action, they are discriminating. Discrimination occurs when prejudice is translated into behaviors that treat others unfairly on the basis of group membership. Racism is an ideology based on the belief that an observable, supposedly inherited trait is a mark of inferiority that justifies discrimination against people with that trait. 
Racism is very much tied to power and control. Usually, if you're talking about race issues, those who are being privileged because of their race want to make sure that other groups don't have access to that privilege because of the other group's race. Institutional racism refers to a larger pattern of racism. Sometimes certain groups are discriminated against by an institution such as a bank, a university, or a government. In some schools across America, they were giving standardized tests to black and white students in the same school. Black students were actually scoring as well or better as white students, and they were being put in the lowest academic tracks. And that is an example of institutional racism. Despite the efforts of many in society, divisions along racial and ethnic lines continue to exist in the 21st century. Racism didn't come about yesterday, therefore it won't leave tomorrow. The good news is things have gotten better and things are getting better. The bad news is there's still a long way to go. Despite the ideal of racial and ethnic equality, stereotypes, discrimination, prejudice, and racism still exist. How can we begin to understand the concepts of race and ethnicity? One way is to explore them using the sociological perspectives, functionalism, conflict, and interactionism. From the functionalist perspective, racial and ethnic differences exist because they serve important functions for a particular society. In Nazi Germany, for example, Hitler fostered anti-Semitism for a reason. Prejudice served an important function in his regime by creating a scapegoat for the frustrations many Germans felt after World War I. The functionalist view of society is that you need some kind of bonding experience for the group. And in Hitler's Germany, the use of scapegoats, the use in particular of gypsies, Jews, any of a number of persons who could be seen as the enemy of the pure Aryan race, became the rallying cry for getting the German people to see themselves as having some kind of unitary or community experience. The conflict perspective examines race and ethnicity in terms of economic and political power. Conflict theorists believe that racism is about ongoing exploitation of people of color that goes back all the way to slavery and the inception of the country. According to this perspective, those with power use race and ethnicity to create intergroup conflict that will work to their advantage. This was especially true in labor disputes during the Industrial Revolution. When workers got together to try to form unions, the industrial giants, uh, the owners of the factories, would sometimes fire them and bring on other people to take those jobs, producing resentment and conflict. In Hawaii, a succession began with, let's say, one ethnic group working the factories for a dole pineapple, and then when they went on strike, let's say, the, the Japanese were brought in to replace the Chinese, and then the Filipinos to replace the Japanese, and so forth and so on. So you get a succession of ethnic conflict and the replacement as a function of a managerial strategy to keep the workers from forming a unitary force. Functionalism and the conflict perspective often examine group relations within the larger structures of society. Interactionism, however, focuses its attention on group interaction on a much smaller scale. One aspect of race and ethnicity that interactionism examines is labeling. Labeling reduces complex individuals to stereotypes. Racial labels have an interesting function. They both serve as inclusion and exclusion. When people begin to think of themselves in racial terms, it's because some other racial group is around. Whites are only white if there are non-whites around. And so the label white takes on its meaning only as a relationship. If we all experienced the world the same way, and if we all had the same level of choice in our society and opportunity, and we had open levels of communication with other groups, then racism would be a thing of the past. 
Each of the sociological perspectives can help us look at race and ethnicity in unique ways. By using the perspectives, we can explore and understand the complex aspects of race and ethnicity.